Kelly had bitten her tongue back in December of 2006. And as she's a diabetic, it didn't heal quite as quickly. And as that progressed for a few weeks, it got worse, so she went to the dentist. And that's really how the whole thing started. She um, was diagnosed with stage four tongue cancer, and she had actually bitten into the tumor. You know, the tumor was growing. Luckily for her, it was in an area that was growing up, and she bit into it. And that's how they found it. It all happened very fast. Yeah. I started this at my dentist, and he sent me to an oral surgeon, and then they sent me to Emmy, and then two weeks later, I was turning in surgery. Like, it was... Quick. No. Was, they decided it was very aggressive. It was stayed sore when they found it, so... I lost my mother to stomach cancer back in 1990, and my husband, Carly's dad, died in 2003 of head, neck, and face cancer. And unfortunately, Carly drew the genetic card. I chose a pretty aggressive form of the radiation and the surgery. And the surgery was 17 hours. And um, they removed pretty much everything in my neck that they could take out. And, um, but before that, they had mentioned that I could opt for the surgery and the genotherapy. And, um, but this radiation, um, it jumped to an 85% chance of it not coming back. And so, and with the chemo, I only had a 10% chance of it not coming back. So with a combination of them both, after the surgery, I mean, they should almost tell me I'd never have to fight that again, so. That was, I, I didn't really feel like I had an option. I then not let it out. How did you choose not to maybe suffer more, but in the long run, have a life? Her plan was going to be chemo and radiation, surgery, chemo, and radiation. She had to have nine teeth extracted first before she had the radical neck dissection where they removed her whole tongue. And they took out, you know, anything they could in that area that they, you know, they cut a really wide swath. And when this happened with Carly, the, truly the love, the prayers, and the support that came, it just was incredible. Um, I just could not, Carly and I couldn't have made it through this without our Electa family. I call it mine, but she's really like an adopted child to them. <laughs> they all know her, she cooks for them, and it's just a great place to be. That company is so much more to me than just an employer. You know, they have, I cannot tell you, you know, that we, they really take pride in caring about each, you know, each other. It's just my family. And I, you know, you really don't think about it until it hits home. And when it's your child, it puts a whole new perspective on it. And I really didn't even realize how much it was going to change my attitude about my job until I saw my child climb up on that table and have her put on the mask and the lasers line up across her head. And, you know, I caught the Electa logo on the machine and this tear started to stream. And I just have a whole different perspective now of what it is my company does. You know, we really do care about people and we're in the business of trying to save lives. It was kind of strange because we have a lot of stuff around our house, you know, like things from cookouts or t-shirts and stuff like that, and it was pretty comforting because I knew from my mom and from the salespeople that we're friends with, I knew how much confidence they had in the machines that they made, and I knew how much confidence the doctors had, and just knowing that it's, it's very comforting in a very uncomfortable situation. Like, and just to see something that you're familiar with and that you know works is it's such a relief. I am just so proud wherever I see that logo because I know how it touched my life personally. You know, and this is just another, to me, another, you know, fine way that Electa shows who we are. It's a great cause and 
you know, I'm hoping for a cure, and I'm sure everybody is at my company as well, you know. It's a blessing, and a lot of us. It's also a sense of love. It gives me an opportunity to really experience people loving me, and like knowing that people care about me, and that, and it's so important because I felt a lot of my drive to get better and to want to prove the doctor's wrong was because I didn't want to let anybody down. I, I knew that all these people cared about me and all these people were doing whatever they could to help me. And the least I could do is fill up and do my best version of myself at that time. And we were just lucky that her, com and that her company was filled with people like that. that they didn't really care about me. Oh, yeah. It was about three months from the day of surgery till we came back on Memorial Day weekend. And that, uh, and there was a group of people that surprised Carly even coming home that day that lined our neighborhood. We, they planned it. So as she pulled in, they didn't want to talk to her. They just wanted to show her support once again. Lined our street going down to our house holding candles. And the timing was incredible. There was a full moon that night I'll never forget. And nobody said a word to her. They were just all along the street, and they were holding candles and just waving at her as our car pulled in to let her know. Right? It was, it was amazing. It really was. The neighborhood and there was just hundreds of candles all the way down the road. And she, they knew she was really tired and in no condition to talk to anyone. So they blew out their candles as we pulled past, and after they waved to her, and we got to our driveway, and they all just left, just to welcome her home to let her know that the support had carried her home really is how I felt. We're taught all of our lives how to be good givers, but this has been one of the most humbling experiences for me as a mother, you know, to learn how to be a good receiver. But everything that goes through gives me more perspective for yeah. other people. And every day's a gift. That's our mantra after everything we've been through. We, we are both grateful for the gift of another day. And that we have the opportunity to do for other people. That's it strangers. Yeah. No. That we've met in the hospital. That we've had the opportunity to do for them what so many have done for us. Yeah. And that, I mean, you can't buy that. It's just awesome to make somebody else happy by giving them a blanket or giving yeah. them breakfast if they're in the hospital with their life. Or, yeah. Any little thing like that, it can change someone's whole bed. And, and it changed ours. Yeah, <laughs> Every day. Just. Mm -hmm. And I know that we'll all die, and that will happen, and I'm okay with that. But while, while I still have it in me to fight, I'm not gonna... In the fifth stage for cancer, I thought, man, this is gonna suck. <laughs> but never once did I think it was gonna kill me. And never once when I went blind did I believe it was permanent. And never once when I had hope for it did I think, oh, this is an atonement. And if you can just believe that you have it in yourself to get through whatever that's thrown at you, it's, it's pretty easy to be proud of it. And I'm still, every step of I've had, I've had no sign of, of luck at chances all the time, so.